Hey everybody. Uh, yesterday I got back from this weekend the Meaningful Gameplay Game Jam, um, which was hosted downtown in Des Moines. Yes, we do have a downtown. And uh, it was actually a pretty amazing experience, I think. Uh, I wasn't anticipating the... I mean, I, I was going to go and I thought I, it would just be kind of a jam where the theme was Meaningful Gameplay, but uh, it was kind of a cool, almost therapeutic, self uh, uh, retrospective kind of thing where you, you kind of really had to dig deep into what you were trying to make and what you were trying to convey. Um, I'll have a write-up and uh, a link to the Meaningful Gameplay website um, so you can see the games that were made. Uh, like one guy made a game um, called Giga Wife, which was about uh, it was basically about how he felt about how um, he was in his relationship with his wife, uh, and I, I thought it was a very moving game. Um, it was kind of, it has some interesting mechanics in there. Uh, I made a game and uh, got some great feedback on it, where I talked about, uh, my game was called Learning to Fly, and I was trying to convey uh, something about how I've been feeling for the last year in terms of uh, the kinds of thought processes that you might have in work uh, as an indie or as, you know, basically any kind of uh, endeavor where, you know, sometimes you feel like you have to compare yourself to other people and you start feeling down because you're not as good as someone else and, um, and so I was trying to convey this idea like, you know, there's competition but only if you allow it to be, you're really only competing with yourself and uh, I managed to make two prototypes and was able to critically analyze, because that was a big part of it, was critically analyzing what you made and giving presentations on it uh, at the end of the jam. Uh, and there were a few other cool games, like it was one based on Hunger, um, which originally was just made as a tongue-in-cheek thing, but they really did some cool things to try to convey what it's like when you're hungry and uh, making eating satisfying um, through the use of the mechanics in the game, the sound effects and everything, which they made themselves. It was pretty fantastic. Um, but all in all, it was a great experience, and um, I used Stencil. I was learning how to use Stencil Works um, to make the games. So the games are actually in Flash, and uh, you can check them out once I get them uploaded someplace permanent, because right now they're in my Dropbox folder. But um, anyways, so that was a pretty cool experience. Uh, people are talking about tutorials, and I'm inclined to agree with Phil about having, like, in-game tips. Um, I don't know. Black and White is the game I always bring up as an example. Like, there's the very first level where it's just a tutorial and it walks you through how to play the game, like, how to move the mouse and how to make the world move based on what you're doing. Uh, and you can't skip it. I mean, if you play a, uh, play the game and you want to replay it, it's like they assumed that you were only going to play it the one time. Which I think goes back to what Mike's talking about in terms of making the game you know, and people are trying to work too hard to make the game, uh, the, co the code, stable and uh, useful for a long time. Uh, I mean, I would want to make a game that I think people should play and then want to replay, and um, I don't know, I feel like if you're just going to put the game together as quickly as possible, yes, it's great to get it out there. In fact, this week I'm going to be trying to, to do some rapid <laughs> game development to get something ready for the, uh, what do they call it, the Chicago, give me a second, I should have had this somewhere, let's see, Indie City, the Chicago, come on, Open House Games Expo, which is uh, this Saturday, I'd like to show off Stop That Hero there, and uh, so I'll be working on trying to get the game together as quickly as possible for that. But I'm not, I'm probably not going to keep any of the work I've done in terms of, like, this is going to make it as is into the final game. Like, I'm going to have to, you know, probably look through it and say, okay, let me take this and uh, shore it up, essentially. Because I do want this game to be something that people feel pretty comfortable playing, and I hope that, I mean, a lot of it is basic infrastructure stuff, so I'm going to be reusing this for other games, even if it's not like a full engine. Um, it's really more just a bunch of different basic tools that I don't have right now. Um, but 
In any case, uh, I think I've rambled on enough. So that's me catching up. Where's everybody else?